Hi guys, welcome back to Sally's Take. In this video, I'm a little bit late to the train, but I will be talking about Enola Holmes. Now, when the Netflix film first came out, many people were praising it as a feminist story. But I'm here to debunk that and tell you why I think Enola Holmes is a bad feminist. But first, let me do a quick recap of the plot. Enola Holmes is the younger sister of the renowned detective Sherlock Holmes. She is raised solely by her feminist mother, but on the 16th birthday, her mother completely vanished, which prompted Enola to go look for her mother. In the process, she ran into Tewksbury, a rich boy with um, a powerful family who is running away from his family and an assassin. So she decided to help save him, and in the end, she saved the boy, probably had a little crush on each other, and reunited briefly briefly with her mother. Now I will be giving some points supporting why the film's feminism is very performative. So let's start with binary opposition. Binary opposition is like two opposite sides of a spectrum. So good and bad, black and white, left and right, etc. In gender, it's masculinity and femininity, or men and women. According to Wade and Marx Ferry, who are famous writers that my gender professor often reference, they said that we can't think more highly of one type of person than another unless we have at least two types. Distinction then must be maintained if we are going to value certain types of people more than others. So in the gender binary context, men are valued more than women in most societies. And they are valued more because there is still a separation between men and women. Now, applying this to Enola, we can see that the film is not creating a new idea of equality, but Enola is rather just embodying male traits to gain respect from them and from the audience. And because male traits are more valued in society, she feels more valued as well. Enola also takes down other women who follow traditional roles, which brings me to my next point. The I'm not like other girls trope. In the film, Enola said that her mother raised her differently with an emphasis on physical and mental training. These trainings are associated with men or what men are supposed to do. So Enola feels that she is more entitled or better than other girls just because she is embodying a man. She never has to outright say that she is better than other girls, but the way she boasts about her upbringing and her freedom of choice already shows that she thinks what she is doing or what she interested in is better. An example of Enola thinking that she is not like other girls is her corset monologue. In the monologue, she thinks that corset is a symbol of oppression. Now, she can think that all she wants, but my problem is Enola thinks that she is different and better than other girls wearing corsets because she is wearing it at her own will. However, how does Enola know that all women are forced by men to wear corsets to look pretty for them? Some women may just want to wear corsets for their own benefit. Some YouTubers have also come out and debunked the theory and said that corsets back then are used just like a bra and to control postures. Men even wear it. Tight lacing, however, is what restricts the body. Enola feels so uncomfortable being in it that she feels the need to explain to the camera that don't worry, I'm not like other girls, I'm only doing it for a greater purpose, which is so annoying and kind of underlying misogynistic. Enola talks a lot about being able to choose the life that she wants, but does she really? When her mother only introduced her to stereotypically male activities, she will never learn to embroider or cook because just like other boys, she was not introduced to it in the first place. She might have a completely different interest if she could also explore more traditionally women activities as well. And we've arrived at the physically and mentally strong women trope. This is Hollywood's go-to trope when they are writing a feminist story. The men in this trope sometimes are written as stupid, weak, sexist, while the women are written as flawless, almost have superpowers for some reason. Now, in Enola Holmes, for example, she is written as super impressionable and likable. She knows martial arts and can physically tackle a professional assassin twice her size. 
Now, while that's impressive and all, it shows a great deal that the producers don't think Enola will be strong or likable enough if the men around her were decent or if she shows any signs of weakness. Because Enola is embodying male traits, she also kind of embodies the toxic masculinity idea that uh, emotion is a bad thing. We can see that Enola has trouble showing weakness or letting other people help her even in scenarios where she doesn't really have to put up a wall. In the scene after she told Tewksbury that her mother abandoned her, he shows emotions of pity and wants to comfort her, but instead she lashes back at him and not allow herself to be seen as vulnerable or weak. Some may say that this is just how Enola is, she's not a girly girl, and her interest doesn't mean that she is looking down on other women. There is nothing wrong with writing a strong woman, I love me those characters, but there is a way to write them while respecting other types of women as well. Take a female detective from another show, The Alienist, which is set around the same time as Enola Holmes. Sarah is a female detective who has met with many sexism throughout the series. However, she has never shown contempt to other women who work traditional jobs. And she is secure enough in her talent and skills to ask for help from men and women when it is needed. Most importantly, she calls out men and women who overlook and underestimate her just because she is a woman, showing that women can also have sexist behaviors too. A damsel in distress is a common trope in stories, consist of women who need to be saved by a strong knight in shining armor. However, this film reversed it. Enola, a girl, feels the need to save Tewksbury, a boy who is always in constant threat and doesn't know self-defense or survival skills. Now this could be refreshing, right? What's wrong with having a guy take a back seat in fighting scenes or being a follower for once? The issue in the damsel in distress trope is whoever is the damsel is often viewed or written as useless or just waiting for help. It's not bad to write Tewksbury as more feminine or have less survival skills or reversing the roles even, but what bothers me is how Enola overlooks his skills and constantly underestimate him, even when he stated many times that he is not as dumb as she thinks. Which brings me to the next trope. The superiority complex, aka Enola constantly looking down on Tewksbury. Now, Enola already has a problem acknowledging Tewksbury's capability, but when he is actually helpful to the point where she can't deny, Enola feels the need to take most of the credit from him. She cannot accept that Tewksbury saved her, or else she would feel inferior, which is kind of sad. Another point is when Enola said to Tewksbury that you're a man when I tell you you're a man. This is quite offensive and patronizing and is an attempt of Enola showing her superiority to Tewksbury. If the roles were reversed and Tewksbury said you're a woman when I tell you you're a woman, all the Twitter threads are ready to cancel this man. Lastly, the film tries to end on a positive note, Enola realizing that her mother wants her to be independent, or alone but not lonely. However, I don't really understand where Enola gets this epiphany from. Her mother was gone for the majority of the movie, abandoning her child and planning a bomb, which everyone seems surprisingly chill about because uh, I guess it's done in the name of feminism. Nevertheless, I don't buy it that Enola has grown at all. Uh, Enola does not become more vulnerable, she just learns to fall in love with a boy. She never really learned how privileged she is to be able to not follow the traditional roles laid out for a woman, and she never really learns to not look down on other women who does not live the life that she lives. And that's a wrap on why I think Enola Holmes is a bad feminist. 
Now, to be honest, I don't see Enola as a bad person. I can see why some girls even view her as an empowering figure because after all she is a really strong-minded person she is independent and she does stand up for herself but what i don't like is the i'm not like other girls trope this is what really needs to stop masculinity and femininity should be viewed as something neutral like nothing better or worse than one another it is difficult to do, I know, but that is what I think true equality is all about and what feminism should be all about as well. I think this video is going to be more on the controversial side, so I'm very interested to see your guys' opinions on the movie and also on my opinions. But anyway, thanks for watching and happy holidays guys and I hope to see you very soon.